do do ba do ba do 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 good morning good afternoon good evening my name is pete johns this is studio live today and the live recording of this week's studio live today podcast where we're going to be talking about yes the apple vision pro it's probably the last time we'll be chatting about it for a while because i'll be honest with you I'm not as enthused or excited about even doing the armchair viewing as I thought I would be. I thought I would be clicking on and watching every single video and finding out every little bit of information about this thing. But turns out I'm a little underwhelmed. And I don't know if it's the price tag. I don't know if it's the lack of any sort of creativity or music creation apps on there or what it is. But yeah, it's just not floating my boat at this particular point in time. So we'll see how we go. Maybe maybe I'll change. Maybe when the version 2 or the version 3 comes out, uh, things will be different. But for now, yeah, I don't know. Tell me, are you excited? Uh, are you enjoying watching like Marquez Brownlee and I, Justine and all these folks that uh, probably didn't pay for it, uh, playing around with their Vision Pro headsets? And uh, do you think that there's any possibility for music creation goodness in the future with the Vision Pro? Would love to hear from you. Speaking of hearing from you, if you are here live, feel free to go ahead and say g'day. You can also do this. You can put a cue a big chunky cue in front of any of your comments if you would like to ask any questions. What we'll be doing is about a five, 10 minute just sort of preamble here where I'll just be sort of shooting the breeze and talking about a few things. Then gonna dive in and do the live podcast recording and then we'll have some time at the end for any follow-up questions or comments or anything that you want to add. Uh, G'day to Mark Bro who is here. G'day Al Davis Music, Kurt Trummel, Hello, Skeeter Melody, and uh, welcome and thank you to Brian McAdoo. What a cool name, McAdoo. I love it. Uh, was it in Ted Lasso? There was a McAdoo character? Yeah, I love it. Uh, so thank you, Brian, for becoming a member. If you would like to become a member of Studio Live Today here on YouTube, you can do so. StudioLiveToday.com slash member will do it for you. So uh, thank you all for those folks who are already members, folks like Mark Bro, folks like our wonderful moderator, Mr. Thomas Christ. Thanks, folks like the wonderful Christopher Rossi and all the Rossi clan over there as well. Thank you all for your support because it's uh, it's hard out there for a player, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it's uh, not the best time in the world to become an independent creator or to be an independent creator because uh, we, we rely on... A lot of the, a lot of businesses and companies and sponsors and platforms to uh, help us out, and uh, it works fine sometimes uh, until it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't work so well. So uh, yeah, it, it now is one of the times where it's just a little bit down, and I appreciate you. So huge thank you. I got a new patron, a couple of new patrons as well. So th thank you to all the folks supporting over on. Patreon. Appreciate you big time. Uh, Al Davis has got a question before we kick into the podcast recording. Can you change the key of a sample throughout a song at specific points in GarageBand iOS for chord changes? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, let's see. Do I have do I have the facility here to set up to, to answer that? Get a tremor bear. No, another one of our wonderful members and patrons here as well. Let's see. If uh, I didn't set up to do this in this one, but can I add my camera here? Can I uh, can I share my screen? I think I'm going to be able to. There we go. There we go. Yep, where there's a will, there's a way. I just need to adjust a couple of things here. Uh, that looks like it's going to show. There we go. That's me editing my latest video, which is about something similar, about the chords view here in GarageBand iOS. But let's dive over to GarageBand and let's check out this question here. Can you change the key of a sample throughout a song at specific points. So here's the problem that you have with GarageBand iOS. You can change your key signature up the top here, but you can only have one key signature per song. So what you would need to do in that case is say play in your part. Let's just say that you've got a part here where you're playing it in, in C major, which I have done here. Do we have audio? We do. There you go. So say you get to that part and then here you actually want to change key completely for the song. What you can do is you've recorded in all your stuff there as long as here in your key signature you turn off follow song key. Let's say you want to do the old school 80s thing and go up to a D. You can do that and it won't change your original C. You can now record in some D stuff.
So it'll actually change between the C and the D. So the key to keys is that you can use multiple keys in a song. You can only have one key signature at a time though. So as you record, you just need to move your key around with the follow song key off. Probably not exactly what you're looking for there, but uh, hopefully that points you in the right direction. Yeah, if anyone else has any other questions, let me know. Uh, if they come in during the podcast recording, it'll be about a 20 to 25 minute podcast recording. I'll definitely uh, circle back and answer any other questions as we go. Uh, hello, Al Gratila. I hope you're doing well. Feel free to lurk. Thank you. Clear grey sky. Yes, if you'd like to like the video, you can do that as well. That's the free way to support us creators. We creative types. So hello, Kurt. Did I say hello to Kurt? I think I did as well. All right. We're going to dive into the recording, but a couple of quick things. I'll remind folks at the end of the show as well, because we'll, uh, we'll have time to have a bit of a chat at the end. But I did just want to point you towards a couple of things. If you're a GarageBand user and a GarageBand learner, I know many folks have been enjoying only having to watch two, three or four minutes of me every day. So if you're learning GarageBand, check out my GarageBand five minute tips video. That's got all of the information that you need. I've uh, dropped a link there in the description. We're up to 18 different videos already. We've covered all the drums, we've covered all the world instruments and we're working our way through the keyboard now. So I'm showing you everything you need to know about creating using the keyboard instruments in GarageBand iOS all in less than five minute chunks. So just quick, simple, to the point, get in, get out videos, and uh, hopefully you enjoy those. The other bit of news is that next week, have a special guest on the show and it is my wife, hooray. So yes, uh, Georgie will be joining me next week. We're doing a music quiz time, a who am I? And if you haven't joined these before, uh, we did one last year. It was a lot of fun. It won't, we won't be using Kahoot or anything because too many people come in and spam it and ruin it for us. So it'll be just for, just for shits and giggles. Uh, but what Georgie has prepared is 10 artists who have passed away in the last 10 years. Yeah, going with a really positive theme. So we've got 10 artists uh, who have left us in the last uh, 10 years, and she's got some who am I. So she's going to give some clues, and I'm going to guess. I'm going to buzz in and see if I can guess who they are, and you can play along at home as well. So uh, you can join the quiz. So that'll be at this time next week right here on the channel. So if you'd like to tune in for that, That'd be cool. I said to Georgie, I'm like, people want to see you. They want to make sure you're back. And uh, for those that know, Georgie's been through some surgery lately and uh, had some challenges, but that is all on track and going well. And we'll have her back on the channel next week. So there you go. There's something to look forward to and to put in your future plans as well. All righty. I think we are good to go here. I'm ready to record ourselves this uh, podcast. So uh, we're going to uh, just have a quick drink, <clears throat> have the water this time around. We will hang around at the end. So if you do have uh, any, if you do have any questions or you do want to ask anything, uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll be here at the end of the show, but I'll be ignoring folks for uh, around about the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes to have a chat about uh, the Vision Pro and music. Let's just make sure I've got all of my links up here ready to go. Yep, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a, a, a spoiler of one of the things we'll be talking about there. So uh, we're going to dive into this for yeah now. So we'll take a quick three second pause, and uh, then where the next thing that we'll be doing is uh, doing a podcast recording. So I'll be back with you in just a few seconds. <clears throat> Apple's Vision Pro is the latest kid on the block when it comes to technology. But can you use it for music production and music creation? That's the question that I have and what we'll be chatting about on this week's show. Hello, my name is Pete Johns. This is Studio Live Today and you are watching or listening to the Studio Live Today podcast. Each and every week we talk about topics that are making the news or that might impact you as a creator, specifically a creator that perhaps is into the Apple ecosystem. We're talking your iPad, iPhones, your iPads, your Macs, your Garage Bands, your Logic Pros. And Vision Pro headsets? What? What are we talking about here? Well, I'm going to break down a few things. I've been scouring the internet. I've been watching all the videos so you don't have to. 
because I had the question, hey, are we going to be able to do anything cool related to music with the Vision Pro headset? Is it going to be worth throwing down 3,500 clams? Yes, that's how much it costs, $3,500 US to get a device that maybe we can't even help our workflow or help create music. Well, that's what we're going to be discussing. We're going to be talking about what's happening now from folks who've actually already purchased it and started using it to create music. We're going to talk about the future, what some of the things that we could see in versions 2, 3, 4 and 12 of the Vision Pro from Apple in the future. And uh, going to talk about a few of the challenges that perhaps we're going to be faced with here moving from one platform to another. And a bit of a history lesson here before we get into it. I kind of foresee this a bit like when we went from desktop to iPad, or even if you want to go from analog studio to digital studio to a, a computer at all, because there are always going to be teething problems. There's always going to be challenges. Anything new is always going to be confrontational when folks first jump in and start looking at it or start using it. And the Vision Pro is going to be absolutely no exception. There is going to be everyone on every end of the scale. Just like when we went from analog to digital, there's going to be people that are going to be clutching onto their analog consoles until they get pried from their cold, dead hands. And there's going to be people that are going to jump straight into digital. When iPads came out, there were people that were bleeding edge, that were lined up on day one. They wanted the first version. They wanted to be part of that basically beta tester culture where they're going to be the first to try it out. And there were people that thought it was an absolute joke. And everyone in between. So I think if we just go with an in-between model, this is a brand new version one product. It is very much in its infancy and we're not sure. It is untested in terms of whether it's actually going to help people. Are we going to be creating music by moving sounds around like Minority Report? Or are we just going to let it gather dust because, hey, we've already got platforms that work for music creation. That's what we're going to be discussing here. So what's happened so far? Are people creating music using the Vision Pro? Well, yes, it's a yes with a big but, because the vast majority of music creation so far with the Vision Pro has been, drum roll please, uh, people mirroring their Mac screen. So one of the best features of the Vision Pro headset, and if you're not aware, again, I've, I've talked about it before and many people already know what the Vision Pro is all about, but it is a high-end uh, well, it's not augmented reality or virtual reality. It is what Apple are calling spatial computing. So instead of having a computer with a mouse and a keyboard and you stare at a 2D screen, instead you are immersed in a three-dimensional spatial environment. And part of that spatial environment that you can set up is a giant screen. Because uh, you can imagine if you are in a space that is virtual, you can have whatever screen size you want. You can actually just drag your screen out to as big as you want because this is very close up, high definition, high pixel depth stuff. So what have people been doing? Well, guess what? They've been running Logic Pro and Fruity Loops and Pro Tools on their Mac and then mirroring that over to their Vision Pro. So there are some things that you can do, but the vast majority of people Funnily enough, haven't been using the cool gestures and the touches and things. They've been connecting up a Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad and using that. So a glorified 3D virtual reality screen for your Mac for three and a half grand. Where do I sign up? Maybe that's for you. But that's definitely been the most practical way that people have actually been using the Vision Pro thus far. Thus far. Is GarageBand on the Vision Pro yet? No. Is Logic Pro available for the Vision Pro yet? No. Any of those people that you've seen TikToks or YouTubes or screenshots or videos of them using that, it's all just mirroring their Mac screen. That's it. There's no actual native music production apps for the Vision Pro. Or are there? <clears throat> well, not quite, but we're starting. We're starting to see something. For those watching the video version, I'm going to show you a couple of little things here, but you can play along at home because there are links to all of these in the show notes of the audio version or in the links below if you're watching the replay of the video version. The first app for music, quote unquote, creation that I've seen available is uh, DJ. If you're an iPad user, you would be familiar with DJ, the DJ app. Well, it's available now in the Vision Pro and 
you don't really have to see the screenshots to understand what's going on here. It's exactly what you think it is, right? It is exactly what you think. It is a view that you've got a couple of decks in front of you in a virtual space. And what you can do is you can grab virtual records, virtual vinyls from your virtual shelf, and you can virtually pull them out and you can virtually throw them on your virtual turntables and then virtually DJ and mix and cut uh, to your heart's content. Now, again, this is an app that's available for Mac, for iPhone, for iPad, apparently for Apple Watch. I didn't realize that. That's kind of cool. I'm downloading and trying that straight after this show. There you go. But uh, the Apple Vision Pro version is the latest incarnation and allows you to mix and scratch and re resample and, and uh, do all the remixes that you would like to do. So, <clears throat> yeah, if you're a DJ and you're a creator, is it going to be something you're going to be using a lot or is it kind of a little bit of a, f uh, a fad, a little bit of a something fun? Uh, you be the judge on that. Something that is a little bit cooler is uh, our friends over at Moog. They have released uh, an app called Animoog Galaxy. If you're familiar with the Animoog series, uh, Moog have been all over the Mac and the iPad and the iPhone. They're, they're doing a lot of software stuff lately. Of course, Moog, creators of the amazing Moog, synthesizers, the original stuff. Well, now you can have a kind of virtual Moog synthesizer on your desk in, uh, in spatial computing augmented reality. And uh, you kind of got to see this thing. It is sound design meets spatial computing is what they say there. And uh, yeah, look, it looks a little gimmicky to start with, but you've got yourself a little keyboard. You've got a 3D space where you can move things around. It, it's I like it because they're out there. They're trying things. They're doing things. And it could be something, especially for our synth head friends out there in the community, Maybe you do want something like this. I, I said, well, as soon as this came out, I said, the killer app's got to be the virtual theremin. Who doesn't want to play a theremin in space in front of them um, with their virtual reality glasses? I would, I would sign up for that. However, <clears throat> is it going to be a game changer? Is it going to help people create all the music? Maybe not. But maybe you, you use this, you create some cool synth sounds, and then you throw that into your, your Logic Pro project on your Mac. Who knows? We're, it, we're, we're here at the beginning. Next up, we have Spatial Symphony. Now, I couldn't find a lot about this. So uh, it, it, it looks kind of similar to what Moog are doing. It's a synth editor. It's lots of kind of 3D blocks and things that you can manipulate with your fingers and move around. But I can only see some static screenshots at this point in time. No one seems to have even tried this one. So if you have found some videos or perhaps you have a Vision Pro and you would like to try it out and uh, provide some videos, I definitely want to see this in action because... Yeah, it looks kind of, it kind of reminds me of like Lawnmower Man style virtual reality in terms of how it actually looks. It doesn't look particularly impressive, but maybe the proof is in the pudding and maybe actually moving sounds around with your fingers could be a lot of fun. So Spatial Symphony from Hudson Heavy Industries is another one that perhaps we need to watch out for. And look, it wouldn't be a, well, it's not AR or VR, it's spatial computing, but it wouldn't be a pair of uh, goggles in a nerd helmet if you didn't have games. <laughs> and one of the games that you may be familiar with on other platforms is Synth Riders from Kluge Interactive. Not our friend Clayton Von Kluge, but Kluge Interactive, unless he does make this game, who knows. So Synth Riders, uh, think Beat Saber, think all of the games that are sort of action-based music rhythm games. That's what you get here with Synth Riders. The critically acclaimed immersive rhythm game is coming to Apple Vision Pro at launch. So I have seen folks playing this. It looks fun. It puts a very 80s neon retro style thing on your wall and you, you flail your hands around and you duck and dive and, and have some fun with that. So that could be a bit of fun. Not really a creative thing, but I thought I'd mention it here. And it is part of Apple Arcade too. So another reason to uh, to join up to uh, Apple Arcade as well as throwing down the 3,500 clams to, uh, to be an uh, Apple Vision Pro owner. So what do you reckon? <clears throat> Anything in there that, uh, that spikes your interest? Uh, early days. Uh, my, my view on this is very early days. It is cool. It is interesting. It's, it's going to be good to be, again, sitting on the couch with the popcorn, watching folks do this. Do I think that the future is looking good? I don't know. 
I'm a fence sitter from way back, so I, I will reserve judgment for another month or two until we actually see some of the app developers get their hands on these. And hey, uh, if Apple come out and say, here's GarageBand or here's Logic Pro for the Vision Pro, I wouldn't be surprised. I was, I, I'm no longer going to say things because I'm the guy that put his hand on his heart and said that Logic Pro is never coming to iPad. It never will. Stop thinking about it. And then literally the next month, Logic Pro for iPad. So... I don't know. Uh, it could be cool. Playing a virtual violin by just being able to do that in GarageBand, pretty fun. Virtual keys on a keyboard in, in space, pretty fun. I think there's a lot of things. The Erhu, being able to bow an Erhu could be fun. So what about the future? What are we going to see? Are we going to see native apps being developed? Um, we talked just briefly then about Apple, but what about... Cubasis or Aurea or uh, Fruity Loops. Yes, your old FL Studio. What about Nano Studio? What about all of these developers that are developing apps for iPad? Because from what we've heard from developers, the Vision Pro ecosystem and infrastructure, it is basically like a big three-dimensional iPad. And in fact, you can run a lot of iPad apps directly on there. Unfortunately, they did the same thing they did with Mac M1, which is that even though it can technically run every single iPhone and iPad app ever made, app developers can opt out of that. So I don't know if there are any apps that have snuck through that are iPad apps you can use on the Vision Pro. But again, the interface, like we saw when we went from Logic Pro on Mac to Logic Pro on iPad, going from Logic Pro iPad even to the Vision Pro, it's going to be very different. Because even though it's touchscreen, having a 3D space with a touchscreen, if you don't change anything, it's just going to be as if a screen was in front of you. And hey, that might be slightly better than using a mouse and keyboard, but you're still basically just using a virtual iPad and doing exactly the same things. I don't know if that's actually going to float anyone's boat. I don't know if, you, if you're mixing a song, spending three hours with a helmet on, um, you're going to get better results than just sitting in front of a screen with a mouse and keyboard. But we could be, uh, we could be in for a surprise. I hope so. What are some of the other cool things that we're seeing in the future? Well, the Vision Pro does have eye tracking, which is going to be very interesting for me because one of my eyes doesn't move very much in case you've never seen me on video. <laughs> so eye tracking is where you actually look at what you are doing and you can actually pinpoint things. So because you don't have any sort of movement uh, with the, the Vision Pro, you actually click and tap and select by looking at something, it determines what you're looking at and you, you literally tap your fingers together and that selects things. So that could be kind of cool in terms of moving things around. And we're already seeing that with the, the Animoog and uh, the, the Spatial Symphony kind of apps that, yeah, creating a 3D space and moving things around is pretty cool. That could be cool for things like Dolby Atmos mixing. So I can see that because we've already got, like if you've, you've got the sound there, you can also use headphones, you can use uh, Apple uh, AirPods as well. You can actually get Dolby Atmos sound by default. So instead of having to have a 10 speaker array in your studio, you could literally be mixing something and being able to hear all of the different components and flying them around in real time with your hands, as opposed to trying to imagine a 3D space on a 2D screen. So I think that could be kind of cool and that could be a functionality that I think will be useful being in a 3D environment to almost be able to look around and touch the space and also hear the space around you with 3D surround sound. The only other thing that kind of comes to mind straight up, and if you've got other thoughts and other ideas, watching the video version, let me know down in the comments, or you can always hit me up, Pete, at studiolivetoday.com, if you're listening to the audio version, is things like visual EQ. So the ability to move things around in a space could be cool. If you can actually visually... Now, I've always said mixing with your ears, not with your eyes, is the best way to go. But if you're just able to see your frequencies and then be able to move things around and see right in front of you how things are changing. And if you want to do some visual kind of EQing, uh, that you're doing some sort of adaptive EQ and things, I can imagine that, yeah, you take a visual EQ and you put yourself into the space and you can actually see your waveforms and you can see your different frequencies. That could be kind of cool. You could actually be seeing the music as well as hearing the music and then adapting and, and using some different plugins. We've never really thought about this because for the most part, music has been stereo and two-dimensional. 
But as we move into the future, we're probably going to see a lot more Dolby Atmos and, and Dolby Digital and surround sound sound, and also a lot more spatial video. So uh, even outside of Apple, uh, we could see a time in the future where a music video is a, is a 3D music video or it's a 360 degree video. There's already a lot of 360 degree videos using the sound with something like that and being able to hear how your song sounds facing in different directions or flipping right around and from behind you, it could be interesting. So there's options. There's things there in the future. I don't think it's just like it's a dud. It's not going to help anything. But like most things, it's not all one or all the other. There's some interesting things in there that I think need to be considered, but it's not necessarily going to be the be all and the end all. What are some of the problems that we're going to see? Well, let's start with the most obvious one. And that is the price. So at the moment, at least $3,500 US here in Australia. For us, that's around about $6,000 Australian. And then you've got to buy uh, additional storage. That only comes with 256 gigabytes of storage. You need to buy a case for $200 if you want to, you know, protect your investment and not smashy smashy when you're moving it around. So it is the, the barrier to entry around price is big at the moment. Now, will that come down in the future? Will there be a version two? Is there an SE model around the corner that folks like me can afford? Maybe, but at the moment, price is pretty prohibitive. Connectivity. This is all wireless, which if you're in the professional or even semi-professional or even hobbyist audio world, you know that connectivity is king. Having a hardwired connection for things like headphones, for things like audio interfaces and microphones, is kind of pivotal. Sure, you can use Bluetooth MIDI has come a long way and is much lower latency than it was in the past. But wireless audio, Bluetooth audio still doesn't cut it when it comes to audio production, in my opinion, and in the opinion of most folks out there. So not being able to connect up. Now, there is the, the good news is that there's a developer cable, there's a developer band, a developer kit that is another $300 that actually does have a USB-C port, which apparently does have Thunderbolt capability. So it's not that it can't, it's that it doesn't. So from a consumer point of view, Apple don't want you connecting things to this right now. They want you connecting the battery to it, but they don't want you connecting any peripherals, any third-party stuff that's not wireless because they want this to be a wireless experience. Uh, can you imagine someone with like a Thunderbolt dock hanging off the side of their head and like four different audio devices plugged into it? I mean, it's going to happen. <clears throat> someone's going to do it. If you can think it, someone's already doing it or planning to do it right now. Having to have like a powered hub so you connect it up to AC power and then... Yeah. Fun times, right? Uh, so connectivity. Storage we talked about. You do have to pay for additional storage up to one terabyte. In terms of music production, I've got a 256 gigabyte Mac and it is a, a challenge because if you have any sample libraries, if you have large projects, if you have large audio files, and especially if you're working on video, you're going to run out of space in a big hurry. Yes, you can upgrade to a terabyte for an extra four or $500, but even a terabyte, it gets eaten up pretty quickly with high quality. And if we're getting into the world of Dolby Atmos and 3D audio, yeah, that's going to be used. Think about stereo, two channels. Think about now having like 10.1 channels or 10.2 channels. That's a lot more information, a lot more data. Your file sizes are going to grow exponentially as you move into that world. So <clears throat> storage going to be a problem. And uh, let's not forget battery life. So at the moment, even doing light tasks, these things are lasting around three hours. If you were running something like GarageBand or Logic Pro and you had screens up there and you were using your virtual violin and strumming your virtual guitar, you're going to get, what, hour and a half, two hours of total battery time? Yeah, it's going to be a challenge to be able to have enough battery to do what you want to do. So what's my conclusion out of all of this? What do I think you should do? Right now, be like me. Sit back and relax and watch because there really is no hurry with this stuff. This is very much, just like the iPhone one, just like the iPad one, this is the very first. This is the very start. And just like the iPhone didn't even have cut, copy and paste on its first version, having the Vision Pro with a wired battery, with low battery life, which costs a fortune, which doesn't have the apps or the support from developers, 
yeah, if you dive into it right now, you're probably going to be disappointed because it's not at the point where a regular music producer or creator is going to have the tools and the things that they will want or need to create music using this. However, in the next version and the version after that and the version after that, are we going to get there? Well, probably. The iPad 1 didn't have a whole lot of connectivity options. It had a 30-pin connector, which was slow and clunky, and you had to buy an adapter, and it very rarely worked properly to record. Then we went to Lightning. Now we're at USB-C. The processing power between like an A4 chip from 10 years ago and the brand new M2 and M3 chips is night and day. We've come a long way, baby, and there's no going back when it comes to our iPhones, our iPads, and our Macs, and this will go that same direction. Will it be successful and something as a creator tool, or will it remain, as many folks have said, more of a consumption device than a creation device? Only time will tell. But I, for one, am going to enjoy sitting back and relaxing. I did want to give a shout out to a few folks. I watched a bunch of videos to put together the information and the insights for this video. Uh, so shout out to L Dre, uh, to 30 Killer Beats, to Audio Edges, to Above the Clouds, to Synth Samurai, and uh, to the DJ for Apple Vision Pro. I've got links to all of the videos down in the description if you're watching the audio version or in the show notes. If you're listening to uh, the, the audio version, uh, the video version is in the description the show notes of the audio version so you can jump down there and watch the if you want to get all the information if you want to see folks that are actually using this device and maybe ask them some direct questions or give them ideas for future content feel free to go and do that if you liked this video and you're here on the youtube feel free to hit the thumbs up button you can also join become a member of this community by joining up uh, and becoming a member and getting the perks like your little emojis and your little badges that you get on youtube or you can join us over on patreon as many folks have done recently and i thank all of you for your support there if you're listening on the audio version i would love for you to leave a rating or a review on wherever you are listening to this podcast and you can go to studiolivetoday.com for all the ways to interact with me and with the channel. I'd love to hear from you there. That is going to do it for this week's podcast. And at the end of each podcast, what do I say? I say, please, for the love of your deity of choice, be kind to yourself this week. Be kind to others and keep creating. I'll see you next time. And I'm still here. I'm going nowhere because I'm still here. Oh, 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 oh. Clayton Von Kluge, hello to you. Uh, <clears throat> I appreciate you. The um, Clayton comes only when he's not on show. So we, we played Clayton on Your Music Live on the weekend. And Clayton's in most of our live streams except when we're playing. Uh, that is a take. I only had to, <laughs> it was a lot better than last week. Uh, poor Tom had to, had to witness me coughing and spluttering in last week's um, podcast. Today, we only have one sneeze and one cough. So there's only two edit points that Johns will have to go in and make sure he fixes up for the podcast version. Yes, be kind. Be kind. Rewind, please. All right, let's, uh, let's scroll back up because I did miss a whole bunch of stuff. I need to say good day to some folks who have joined us here. <clears throat> hey, it's uh, Deep Gravity. Thank you for being here. And our old mate, Condi Eckle. Good day, Condi. It's good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Still kicking it over there in New York City, I hope. Uh, well, I don't hope. You can be wherever you want. Good day, Falcro. I hope you are doing well. <clears throat> What if you could visualize the instruments in your soundstage in 3D and move them around? That, <clears throat> see there, there's another cool thing. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, imagine, imagine for your panning and your stereo spectrum, you got to have a 3D stage and you've just like, you're like a puppet master. You grab your drums and you put them at the back. You put your vocalist in front. You put your guitar and your bass and, your and they all move around in the spectrum. And you can grab your lead guitar and your rhythm guitar and just plonk them around. That'd be awesome. Good call, Chris. Yeah, that, that would be fun. I would enjoy that. Uh, yes, Moog leading the way for sure. Uh, someone will produce a 3D door studio where you can walk into and sit at a mixed desk, move the faders. That'd be cool. Press record on the tape. Oh, can you imagine? <clears throat> I only hope, Condi, that you don't have to like wind the tape on or actually get the tape and like cut. Imagine if they made it like an analog, an analog recording studio uh, simulation. <laughs> where you had to like pull the tape out of the box and put it on and feed it in and oh no uh, we went into we went into um digital to get away from all that stuff so uh, ho hopefully 
Hopefully we don't go quite down that track, but it could be fun. There you go. Yeah, where's your check for Cluj Interactive? It's it's really you. We know it's you. We know it's you, Clayton. Good stuff. Doing concerts. Well, yeah. See, we didn't even explore. See, this is why you folks are awesome. I should have I should have asked you beforehand. Like doing a three D a spatial computing concert where you're wearing your Vision Pro. Um, you've got your iPhone doing the the stereoscopic uh, video pointing at you. And you're like playing a DJ set in your Vision Pro, or you've got your real guitar and you're plugged in. So I don't know. There's, there's got to be options, doesn't there? Absolutely. All righty. Uh, yeah, Pizza Apple will never make a Vision Pro with a 3D mixing disc. Absolutely. I'm, I'm all about saying uh, things won't happen. Uh, the Falcro it looks exciting, but I don't think I want to make uh, a move to uh, even more digital in my workflow. Plus, the expense is exorbitant. Exactly, it's it's not really there. It's not a consumer product yet. I don't think. I don't think it's a consumer product. Uh, let's see. <laughs> where's Where's our friend Barry? There used to be a guy called Barry that would come into every GarageBand weekly and ask me when um, Logic Pro is coming to the iPad. And eventually, I was like, No, never. It's not happening, Barry. And it's like next week. <laughs> Apple announce it. Uh, see, this is an interesting one. Eventually, they'll put adverts everywhere and ruin it. Apple are not too bad. Look, they still do some advertising, but they only do first-party advertising, so they'll only use your data to advertise to you. They're not as bad as some other companies that shall remain nameless, like Meta, um, that, that use your data and sell it off to third-party aggregators. I get so many phone calls and unsolicited emails now from people that I know I haven't directly engaged with, but I know that I've given my information to a third party, ticked the little box, not read the full disclosure statement that I just agreed to, and basically agreed to them selling my data to third party data brokers who then advertised to me. But yeah, I don't know that, I don't know that Apple will pollute their beautiful interface with, uh, with direct advertising. They'll find a way, don't worry. Uh, it's high time for Bluetooth 2.0 with near zero latency, it has to be possible. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Because, like, yeah, I guess Bluetooth, it's easier with MIDI to get low latency because you're literally sending tiny packets of data uh, so they can be really just laser fast. But Bluetooth audio, unfortunately, it's kind of, it's a dog chasing its tail because the more, the better quality of the audio. So now that we're up to, you know, 32-bit float uh, 192 kilohertz audio, there's no way that you can do that over Bluetooth. Like Bluetooth is still sitting at, you know, like 22 and 44 kilohertz kind of highly compressed stuff hello jade star hello sean chandler hope you're doing well uh can we subscribe to apple one on the vision pro i'd imagine you could mm, yeah because it's basically it, the settings app in the vision pro is basically like the settings app in the ipad uh, again this is all second third hand information because i don't own a vision pro i hope i made that clear <laughs> otherwise i'd be wearing it but yeah you, you should be able to sign up to apple one and do basically all the stuff because you can go into your settings you can go to your apple id you can go to your subscriptions you can buy apps you can uh, buy in-app purchases so i'd be very surprised in fact i'm pretty sure if you weren't an apple one one of the first things when you sign into a vision pro would be like hey if you become an apple one member you have access to all these additional apps through apple arcade and an additional two terabytes of storage and blah 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 I know latency is bad, bad news, man. But I'll take late, I'll take digital latency over tape, hiss, analog, just everything, basically, because <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. Steely Dan. What are we talking about, Steely Dan? For that's good. I'm uh, I'm doing I'm doing um, Naughty's songs on the weekend. There's actually quite a few songs from like 2000 to 2009, and some bands that are pretty good. Can anyone say Muse? Oh yes, there will be Muse. Uh, Pete, my mom and pa always said I'd be late to my own funeral. There you go. Oh, thank you, Tom. Yeah, no, I couldn't have done it without, literally couldn't have done it without you because if you watched uh, the video version, you saw that basically after every sentence or after every second sentence, I'd have a coughing fit. So I'd have to hit my mute button and kind of cough my lungs up while Thomas was talking about stuff. And I think I made up a couple of questions. I just threw at Tom and I'm like, so Tom, um, uh, 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 is bad cap good for, for things and stuff? And I, pause <laughs> oh it is it's a conspiracy see that the five doses of science juice have actually been to slowly weaken my immune system and uh, now i'm more susceptible to future oh god sad thing is whenever i try to do a piss take i realize that i'm immediately going to sound legitimate because you can't say you can't say weird wacky conspiracy theory things anymore because everything is being said by people 
and it's like there's no room for satire left. Is anyone else noticing this? That you can say the most outrageous thing and someone's going to take you seriously because someone actually thinks it. It's nuts. Nuts, I tell you. I've been to jazz concerts and the drummer is on the side facing the band. Yeah, look, you can sometimes have drums. Like a, a three-piece, like a three-piece band, three-piece jazz ensemble will often have like the double bass player in the middle and maybe the drummer off to one side and sometimes the soloist, like the piano player or like a, a saxophonist or a trumpet player on the other side. So, yeah, it's not always drums down the middle, especially if it's like a three-piece. Anyway, yes. I oh, know, digital for the wind. Wind? Wind. Conducting a symphony. Uh, good morning to Punk80. Good to see you, my friend. So, something's happened today. All the, all the old crew, all the old garage band crew are out and about. Loving it. Uh, Apple is better than my Android. My iPad is uh, tolerable. My Android is, uh, yeah. So that's the thing. Um, when people complain about Apple and the Apple ecosystem and paying the Apple tax and drinking the Kool-Aid and all that stuff, which I don't necessarily disagree with, I go, well, there's not really an alternative because I have actually tried back in the day. Maybe I should do it again. Maybe I should get a, a, an Android tablet or Android phone and try and create music on it. But last time I tried it, nothing connected. The latency was terrible and it just did not work because there's like a few, there's like what, Caustic is one of the apps on there. And I think you can use BandLab on Android, but yeah, it just doesn't do me a thing. That's the other thing. We didn't really think about, we didn't talk about it, but um, yeah. VR just don't, apparently there's like 10% of people that just literally can't use it because the motion sickness, like my, my dad came over and my dad has some vestibular like balance issues and um, we were just watching like what someone, one of the kids was watching a YouTube video and you can kind of, you can stream it to your TV and just the, just watching the TV of someone, of the kid like looking around, uh, yeah, it made my dad sick. So um, yeah, there's some, it's not going to work for all people, is it? Uh, hello, Steph Beauty. Uh, I am not him. But if you support him, more power to you. More power to you. Made it before the end, Mark. G'day. I hope you had a good supper. I think you had uh, you had a delicious pasta dish. I think you had pasta with some salmon and uh, pine nuts. <laughs> Making stuff up now. <laughs> yes, OGs. Kicking it, kicking it old school with some of the OGs. Uh, we are here at the end. Hello, Thomas J Music. Hello. Hope you are well. Long time no speak. Uh, don't forget, guess what? I've actually almost caught up on uh, all of the submissions for Your Music Live. So if you slide one in like today, you'll probably get on this week's show, which is something I haven't been able to say for a while. So if you're sitting there and you're like, oh man, I haven't been on Your Music Live for a while, or I've, I've got a new song that I'd like to, uh, Pete to take a listen to, uh, submit it, studiolivetoday.com slash YML. I think I've only got about 22 songs so far, and usually we can play 30 to 35 in a week. Uh, mac and cheese with bacon. I was close. I went a class, see, I went the classy version of that. I went uh, pasta with salmon, and you went mac and cheese with bacon. I'm like, hey. But don't worry, I'm a mac and cheese kind of guy myself. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a food of the people kind of person. Uh, yeah, there you go. Throw, throw your, throw your songs that out there because especially if I, if I notice that you've been here, uh, yeah, slide, uh, slide one in. Oh no, my dinger's not dinging. Slide one in. There you go. My dinger's dinging. Um, all right, a couple of final reminders uh, as well as that. Do not forget that uh, I have a new video coming out tomorrow as part of my latest series, the uh, GarageBand iOS 5-Minute Tips. I'm going to be looking at chord strips in GarageBand's keyboard. Yesterday, we, we asked the question, is autoplay cheating? Um, so you can go and check that one out as well. And uh, don't forget that uh, this time next week, you'll be dumped there straight after this show. Uh, this time next week, though, uh, you can catch myself and my better half, the wonderful Georgie. She's got uh, some cool Who Am I? And, uh, yeah, we're going a little dark because it's folks who have died in the last 10 years, uh, famous musical artists who are no longer with us, and she'll be doing a little who am I? And the way it's going to work is she'll, I think she has five clues per person. She'll read them out and I'll, I'll write down when I get to the point, just so I don't spoil it for anyone out there. You can play along too and you can award yourself points. So five points if you get it on the first, four, three, two, one, zero. You get the drift. Uh, not for, not playing for anything in particular, but just for a bit of fun. And uh, Georgie is an amazing quiz master. So it should be a good fun 
chime. So uh, that is going to do it for this one. I hope you all had a great uh, week and are ready for a big weekend here. Don't forget we've got the happy hour uh, surrounded by people. we got Thomas Christ, Jade Stump, myself, Brett Example. you got the happy four hours now uh, on on your uh, your Sunday mornings or Saturday evenings, depending where you are in the world. Uh, we've got Your Music Live. We've got another Garage Band Weekly and a whole lot more happening around here on Studio Live today. So... Uh, yes, <laughs> we can do dark. Go, George. Yes, it should be. Should be a lot of fun. It should be a lot of fun to uh, to do that. Yes, and if you did miss out on this one, catch the replay while you can. Uh, you usually get these end bits, the start and the end bit, for about the first day, and then uh, it gets trimmed. So the, the longer-term video won't have any of this claptrap in it because this is only really relevant to the right now. It'll have just the podcast uh, section in there. So... Uh, thank you again. Uh, well, I'll say it again, even though I said it before. Please uh, be kind to yourself. Please be kind to others. Keep creating. And I'll see you real soon here on Studio Live today. Bye.